Hi, and welcome to the all new Azure Database for MySQL troubleshooting series. I'm Shreya Raithal. I'm a product manager in the Azure Database for MySQL team. And I'm joined by Sai Kondapali, who is also from the same team and an expert really on everything MySQL. In the first episode of this series, we are going to be talking about two things. First, how to get started with troubleshooting any issues that you may face while working with Azure Database for MySQL or in fact, MySQL databases in general. And second, we'll cover an overview of what you can expect in the upcoming episodes of the series. So let's get started. So Sai, I remember when I first started working with MySQL, I had built a PHP web application. It was a front end for an e-health monitoring system that I had built out and it was talking to MySQL at the back end. And I had faced a variety of issues throughout the journey. First, I just couldn't get the application and database connectivity working. And once I figured that out, my application would just intermittently stop working once in a while. And from my interactions with other database users as well as customers, I also heard that one common issue that most people face is the fact that their application is getting slower or the performance is degrading. And we all wonder where the bottleneck really is. Is it in the application side, in the database side, or is it somewhere in between? because of the way the application and database are talking to each other. But whatever would be the issue, the first and the biggest question that we all have in our minds is, how do I identify where the issue lies and what is the cause for that issue? Only then can I go ahead and fix it, right? And that is what we wanted to hear from you today, Sai. Where do we get started? What are some of the common errors and what are the possible causes for these errors? And what is the most recommended approach to actually isolate and resolve these issues? First and foremost, thanks for having me here, Shreya. And those are a lot of questions that you have for me. Uh, I'll take a step back before you know diving into where potential issues could be in your application. And to understand where issues are happening uh, from a sysadmin or from a database administration point of view, you need to be proactive first and foremost. And to do that, you need to monitor your resources. Each and every single uh, resource in your application needs to be monitored. And in Azure, we make monitoring very simple through things such as you know metrics, and uh, you can leverage workbooks, which provide you that uniform experience across all of the services in Azure. That sounds good, Sai, but I'm a little overwhelmed with all the different topics that you're talking about. Um, can you probably give us a demo on how all of this works and how much efforts it take to set these things up? Absolutely. Let me quickly give you a glimpse of how uh, monitoring and how you can track metrics for your resources in uh, Azure. I'll give you an overview on a couple of the resources today, uh, which kind of you know gives you that sense of you know that uniformity between uh, these services in Azure. So here's a quick glimpse of how uh, monitoring would look like uh, across Azure, right? So here I'm showcasing in our portal our managed database service, Azure Database for MySQL. And right now I'm on the metrics tab. And as you can see, it is very easy to track all of your metrics at one place, such as you can track your CPU utilization, you can track your memory utilizations, as well as the connectivity, the amount of storage used, et cetera, over here. And similarly, we also have workbooks integration, which is another service that provides you with easy canvassing of all the uh, uh, resources, the metrics uh, related to the resources at one location. So it makes tracking of your resources much more easier. And you can quickly identify if there are any issues going wrong here. And uh, also looking at uh, some of our other uh, services that are available like virtual machines, we provide this uniform experience where you can track your metrics, like similarly the CPU utilization, uh, the disk related metrics, as well as you know the memory utilization on your virtual machine, et cetera. It makes it easier for you to you know, keep track of things that are happening on uh, your resources with this uniform experience provided by Azure. From a proactive approach, you need to also consider other things such as you know, setting up alerts on top of these metrics because you want to be more proactive with all the information that is provided to you, Shreya. And think about this, right? For example, let's say that you know your virtual machine or database, uh, managed database service, where you don't want the CPU utilization to cross more than 50%, and you would like to get alerted should that cross the threshold limit that you are setting, right? Over there, you can set up alerts, which will make things a lot more easier for you. And you can get notified via SMS, email, uh, et cetera, whenever you know, these resources are crossing the threshold that you're specifying on those metrics. 
in besides that shreya uh, there are other things that you have to uh, ensure that you know uh, you are uh, being proactive and understanding of all the resources in your application stack things such as you know baselining uh, some performance benchmarks against each of the resource for example on the database side you need to run some benchmarks to understand how the database would behave under normal workload as well as peak workloads right so that way you can gauge whether you have to uh, adequately provision the resources so that you know you are prepared when that uh, uh, high number of requests are coming from the application side and you don't want to have any browner periods share and um, besides that um, the other thing that you need to think about when uh, designing or uh, deploying resources for your application is more or less be always uh, prepared with plan b besides your uh, main plan a the reason for that is that you know should something go wrong with any of the resource you don't want to have a full downtime for your application you always need to be prepared uh, well and truly ahead so things as simple as you know setting up a read replica for your database server so that you know if your primary database goes down the read replica can immediately come in and take over the role of primary and can continue serving traffic and besides that uh, we provide read replicas in azure database for mysql which can help you scale out your read workloads as well and other things such as you know uh, uh, having redundant uh, infrastructure for your virtual machines where your applications are deployed so that you know even if your web application server or your uh, uh, actual business logic application server are going down uh, another uh, resource is quickly available to take over and you know provide that continuity for your application and provide the seamless experience for your end, end user share got it that makes perfect sense sai and um, like the saying goes prevention is better than cure so these four tricks were super helpful uh, but with application architectures getting more and more complex i'm really concerned about the point 3 that you talked about how do we actually identify uh, where an issue uh, is occurring in our uh, full stack of environment especially when it's on the cloud that's a great question shreya and today i'm also going to talk to you about you know how to identify where an issue might occur in a um, uh, complex cloud architecture right so if you look at uh, the architecture that i have put up a sample for today there are like bunch of uh, resources that i am uh, actually showcasing here uh, that that is like a common case scenario nowadays for the complex applications that enterprises and organizations are deploying in the cloud let's take this web application simple sample web application and how that would look like so customers usually go to your application from a web browser or even from your mobile device and all of the requests that uh, users initiate would be initially going to uh, the url and the url uh, from there basically will be routing the traffic request through the load balancers to one of the virtual machines where your static web content is hosted and from there the request actually traverses through another load balancer and then ends up in your application layer that could be served by one or many uh, virtual machines where your business logic of the application is sitting and once that is processed then the requests are then initiated to the data tier where your actual database is sitting and over here i'm showcasing today azure database for mysql and your database is the one that processes the uh, request that is coming from the end user and then you know if it has to persist the data uh, in form of insert statements or updates or deletes it does that and send the acknowledgement back if it is a select or a read uh, related statement then it just uh, sends the result set back to the uh, application server as well as the web server so that the request is fulfilled uh, at the end of the day as you can see there are many components involved in this architecture and uh, nowadays with this architecture you have to be very vigilant as to where issues are occurring there are a lot of network paths involved starting from the customer uh, sorry starting from the end user experience to the database layer so you need to always keep a track of how your networks are uh, being utilized and whether they are getting uh, overused or underutilized so that way you can keep a track of the uh, utilizations over there as well and similarly with your virtual machines uh, with your kubernetes services or even with your app services uh, on azure you can potentially run into some sort of you know uh, under provisioning of resources where the requests are not getting fulfilled this could lead to the experience that you were talking about earlier such as you know some of the requests are getting fulfilled and some are not and that's because sometimes the database and the web servers could be under provisioned and do not have adequate resources to process these requests 
Hence, you might have run into that experience, Shreya. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sai. So it's first imperative that we have a thorough understanding of what our architecture is in terms of these three layers and the networking uh, uh, layers as well. And it's also important that we continuously monitor all our resources in these three layers and be vigilant. So, uh, but despite all of these proactive approaches, what do we do if and when an error actually occurs? What then? What approach do we follow? Absolutely. Although you're fully prepared, uh, being proactive, there are always these uh, scenarios where you can uh, potentially run into that, you know, sometimes something is working and other time the other thing is not working, right? In any of the resources here. So here I have put together a general process of, you know, how to identify an issue that might be happening in any resource uh, in your application stack. First and foremost, you need to determine where the issue is happening. This could be in the form of metrics, etc. Like, you know, look at various metrics available for your resources. Are you observing any anomalies, etc. That will kind of, you know, paint a picture as to where something might be going wrong. And that will uh, help you point you in the direction to take the next steps, such as verify that the issue is happening. Things very simple as, you know, if there are any error logs or any other, you know, application related logs where you're observing this error or warning, errors or warnings that are happening, that would, you know, point out to the potential cause of the issue. And once you identify that, you know, determine what the actual issue is. And uh, to determine that error logs are definitely helpful from the previous step. And once you identify where the issue is, how the issue is happening, what the issue is, then remediate the issue by implement uh, implementing a solution. And uh, a good approach here would be to, rather than, you know, directly implementing a solution in your production environment, do always uh, test out something in your pre-production environment or a dev or a test environment so that you are sure uh, that, you know, whatever uh, solutions that you are applying are not going to cause any further issues in your application environments, in your production environments. Yeah. And finally, implement the solution in your production environment so that your application is up and running. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sai. Well, all of these steps look really simple. More often than not, we get into this panic mode and we directly jump into the solutioning uh, part of it, making some baseless assumptions. So uh, thank you for going uh, through this five steps uh, in detail. Now, folks, this is exactly what we are going to cover in the upcoming episodes. For each of these topics, connectivity issues, performance issues, and some other issues related and specific to Azure, we will cover in depth, how to approach the problem, how to isolate the cause of the problem, and how to fix them. Meanwhile, to learn more, do check out our Azure database for MySQL resources page, which is a one-stop shop for all the links to our resources like documentation, blogs, video tutorials, and more. And if you have any further questions, write to us at askazuredb for MySQL at service.microsoft.com. And stay tuned for more updates and announcements by following us on social media. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes in the series.